How are you doing? It's Friday, March 27th, 2020. We're what, two weeks into this uh, coronavirus self quarantine or social distancing. Uh, I trust you guys are doing well, doing your best not to get on each other's nerves in your homes, which seems to be our human nature. I want to thank you guys for all of the prayers that you have lifted up for me, for my family, for us. Uh, we may not be coming here in this building, but I can assure you that uh, the work of the ministry continues. No virus stops people from being sick, people from hurting, people from needing encouragement. You know that as well as I do. So I want to thank you for uh, all of your prayers. I want to thank uh, online all of the individuals that have been coming in and uh, recording us. Kudos to all of the people doing the the videos and doing the, the teaching and coming in for the worship. It's been just a tremendous thing. And to echo a message that you've probably heard a few times, but just keep us posted on any needs that you have, uh, contacting the church office through the various ways that are available to you of any current um, information, contact information, letting us know how we can be praying for you and how we can be reaching out to the, those who have need. And this is a, th we're all in this together. Uh, we're all in this together. There's one that we look to, the Lord Jesus, for the strength and the help and the grace that we need. I just want to share with you, dear saints, a couple of things to encourage you. Uh, the Bible says in Psalm, or I'm proud, excuse me, Proverbs 18, verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous runneth into it and is safe. And in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, there is grace. In the name of the Lord, there is comfort. In the name of the Lord, there is strength. In the name of the Lord, there is healing. In the name of the Lord, there is peace. In the name of the Lord, there is hope. In the name of the Lord, there is encouragement. In the name of the Lord, there is mercy. In the name of the Lord, there is grace. And, uh, and I just want to encourage you. Uh, probably like me, you are taking in so much coronavirus information, and I think it's good for us to be informed and to follow the rules that we have been given to medically uh, make sure that we are uh, helping one another to stay healthy and clean. Only God knows how long this is going to go on. Uh, but uh, having said that, you have to have a time where you cut that off. And instead of taking in information, just renewing your mind with the Word of God and passing it on to each other in your home and passing it on to your group of friends, brothers and, Chris, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, just passing on to one another the, the encouragement that, that we all need. The, the, the newscasts are, are sometimes uh, skewed and dark and ominous, and it'll, it'll drag you down. Uh, but the word of the Lord is is good news. And so passing on that good news, passing on a, a scripture, sending a postcard, sending a text message. Uh, for those of you that are the haves and you know that someone is a have not, just anonymously sending them maybe a gift card for groceries or things like that. Just being the church wherever you are. The name of the Lord. I was thinking about that today in my devotions uh, I, you know, got up, made some coffee, and I was reading the, the latest coronavirus statistics. And I felt the Lord was telling me to, to go into the Psalms and just look up the phrase, thy name. And how encouraging it was to read that phrase, thy name, thy name. You know, in the fifth Psalm, one of those references, in fact, I believe it was the first reference, it says, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. And that word rejoice means to brighten up and, and cheer up. And if you put your trust in Christ, uh, rejoice, not in the circumstances, 
not in the discomfort that uh, this is placed upon all of us, but rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. And he says, then, then let them ever shout for joy. So maybe you're able right now where you're watching this, if it's not early in the morning, just shout for joy, let out a shout, maybe open up the window and shout. I, uh, uh, I was watching something about in Italy where uh, that's my uh, tribe. Uh, those Italians, they're crazy. I tell you that. Anyways, long story short, when they were told they had to quarantine, some of them were just opening up their window and singing and shouting to one another. And what a wonderful thing that would be. I mean, the weather is getting warmer. Praise God. Geese were over my head this morning. Thank you, Jesus. The, the sign of better weather to come. But opening up the windows and just shouting uh, out the name of Jesus. Let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Notice, because you defend them in all that is going on. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for uh, those that are in, in the law enforcement that are there to help us and protect us. We should be praying for them. We should be praying for our political leaders. Uh, this is not a time to be divided over whether you're independent, Republican, Democrat, just praying for them, praying for those first responders. But the Bible says, having said all of that, that the Lord is the one that defends us. He is our defender. And let them also that love thy name. There it is, thy name. That was the first one. The name Jesus, the name Emmanuel. Be joyful in thee. Be joyful in thee. In Hebrews chapter 4, we read, Let us therefore labor to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And of course, the rest that is spoken of here is the rest that we find in Christ. But you and I know that sometimes we get a little restless, don't we? We get a little anxious. We get a little nervous. And Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I believe that that means much more than, and praise God that it does mean a rest of striving to get right with God because he's done it all. But I believe that God has a rest for you and I. And so uh, doubt your doubts. Just place that rest in the Lord himself. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And how we need God to give us discernment. There are so many things that people are saying out there. Conspiracy theories are abounding. There's all kinds of things that can get you and I off track. We need to discern, Lord, what are you saying? Because it's only what he's saying, what he's doing, that means, uh, that is of value to us. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And then jumping down to verses 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens. So that, of course, tells us about the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. He's alive. Our high priest is alive. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or our confession. Now listen to these two verses, beloved. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched or sympathize with the feeling of our infirmities, our weaknesses, our sicknesses, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Peter writes about Jesus being without spot and blemish. And here's what I want to leave you with. Let us therefore come boldly or draw near confidently to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And no doubt during this crisis, there are going to be many times where we are going to need to go 
to that throne of grace. There's going to be all kinds of needs. You know, what is so wonderful about this, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verses 17 through 23, a priest who had a blemish could not offer the showbread or enter behind the veil in the holy place. You and I are so cleansed through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are invited and commanded to come boldly. That word boldly means confidently, confidently under the throne of grace that we may obtain what? Mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And so saints, this is a time that has come upon us unexpectedly, but it's not a surprise to the Lord. And in this time, in the awkwardness of it, may we all be praying that we may hear what it is God wants to teach us. And again, how wonderful it is to be able to have technology as such that can be used for the kingdom of God and for the glory of God. And let me say this, you may be cooped up, you may be hemmed in, you may be restricted, but I believe with all my heart that this is a time like never before. We haven't seen anything like this in over a hundred years. I believe this is a time when the body of Christ can reach out to our neighbors, to our friends, to our unsaved family members like never before. What an opportunity to use the internet that is used to promote conspiracy theories and all kinds of other stuff that may or may not be true. But one thing we know is the truth, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this much we do know. People that contract this coronavirus may die. One is too much. But we are told that every human being is born with something far worse than the coronavirus. And we are all born and infected with sin. We are S-I-N positive, And there is one cure, and that is Jesus Christ. So look for opportunities to pray for and share the gospel with those who do not know Jesus. Again, stay in touch. Miss you dearly. But when I'm recording these Bible studies and I look out at those chairs, I know exactly where you're sitting. I know exactly where you're sitting right now. You can't fool me. And I know you're praying for me and I'm praying for you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you until we meet again. God bless you.